it's like my third time recording these. <laughs> I, uh, first one I went to record, I broke my camera and then the wind made the rest of it unusable completely. And then the last time my voice was so bad that even though it was the right conditions, I couldn't understand what I was saying. So hopefully this one turns out better. So <laughs> I'm back again. Um, there's, there's a lot to cover, but I wanted to reach out and update those that were interested in my progress and how things have been going while also talking about the workshop that Curtis put on back in July. I know it's been a while, but I'm getting there. So all in all, my progress has been moving forward, but since that workshop, it's been really slow. And it's because after the workshop, and I mean, the last day of the workshop, I felt a little scratchiness in my throat, you know, all that goes. And yeah, I get hit really hard with was probably COVID. And then I got sick with pneumonia. It's just, it, it just kept lingering. A whole lot of crap just kept going. And you can probably still hear it. I reduced lung capacity and yay, all that good stuff, but still here. So now leading up to camp, uh, huh, my training reg regiment was pretty hefty and we were really, really consistent because it, up until uh, I was at this beach in North Carolina on vacation with family and it was amazing. I was, I was training while I was down there. I mean, training on the beach is just kind of awesome anyway. But yeah, I was in like a shared beach house with a bunch of family members and I would be in the corner of the living room or I'd be underneath the house because it's on stilts and just out there in high humidity, high heat, like nine in the morning, just grunting it out. So that was fantastic. That's honestly like kind of my ideal vacation is something where I can train and then relax. And so then since the workshop, uh, there's a chunk of time where I, I didn't really have energy to do basic things. So I've been working back up to it and now we're on a more consistent schedule and we're working back up to our times and we're, we're getting back into it. There are certain things that I've really stopped doing and then now, now I have a little bit more energy and I can do a few more things. I'm doing those a good bit more and more and a lot of those came directly from the workshop because they're just super handy and I don't want to forget them and I want to kind of obsess. So it's, it's what I'm going to do. But I'm on the upswing and I'm able to do a few more things. I'm able to train a little bit longer. And I'm finding that while a certain few things did you know, tighten back up or you know, a couple little things slid a little bit, for the most part, I, I haven't really fallen back. It's not like, oh, my shoulders are now terrible all over again. Uh, my shoulders still need a lot of work, but they're, they're as good, if not a little better than they were going into camp. And that's really exciting for me. Uh, some of the hip things that I've been working on, like my right claw opening up that bad boy, I've actually made progress since that workshop, and so I'm really excited about that. My feet, I keep forgetting to mention, the other times I went to record this, I completely forgot to mention any of this stuff, but uh, as you know, I've been repairing my, my left arch, and it's been kind of realigning my ankle and how my heel sets, or how the front pad of my foot sets, and all the articulation in that arch where I didn't have, I had literally none, I actually have articulation in that system of my foot now. And I'll go out walking around or doing something down here, and especially if I'm barefoot, I can pick up my foot and look at it and there's that nice little middle patch and there'll be no dust on it, no dirt, no nothing. And that's really nice because that means in my normal walking habits, that portion of my foot, the arch, is actually staying pretty well raised up away from the ground. And then the weight is distributing throughout my foot in a lot better alignment. So that's really exciting. It's also kind of unlayering my toes. My toes are all like twisted and some actually go off at like 45s at the end and they were kind of overlapping. Now they no longer overlap naturally. And my toes are straightening out and my feet at the end of them are kind of widening in their space. I, my shoes fit a little differently now. I've actually had to stretch out some of my other shoes. And funny enough, 
some of my toenails are growing differently. That's kind of an odd detail, but something I noticed because I, I trimmed them differently. I'm not worried about hangnails and ingrown toenails. It's, it's a nice little thing to have. So I have to talk about my feet so much, but um, I passed that. Uh, I've, I've really, I've become a lot more aware of the fascia in my body. And I'm going to be kind of light on details for this part because I don't know how much of the, how much of that I really want to explain and then send somebody down the wrong thing or give away too many details from like the workshop or something. But um, you can kind of think of it as like you're, you're wearing a wetsuit. And I've heard that analogy used a lot and it's actually one that I also use quite a bit because it's, it's a good analogy for it and you can do things with it and you can uh, it's hard to get into without explaining too much of it i feel but there are a lot of things that you can do with your fascia and if you're in hme you know exactly what i'm talking about and you probably also know how good curtis is at explaining a lot of that so i've been tinkering with a lot of that and playing with things and it in a lot of ways i feel more connected still than I did before the workshop and before getting really sick. So that's, that's really, really happy news for me because that means you know, I'm not just losing all this progress and being set back extra amount of time every time I get in the hospital or something. Yeah? So enough way, so is me. Uh, <laughs> the workshop itself, it was, it was fantastic first off. Uh, if I, you know, just like quick and dirty review. It was great, built on things that we previously worked on, gave us more things to work on, lots of hands-on, not just for me, but uh, for everybody there. And it was, it was a great time. So Curtis is a, <laughs> I, I, I would describe him as a goofball, but he also takes certain things very seriously and you can, you can tell but he shows you where to put emphasis and he, it's, he, he's a good example, especially teaching wise of how I would like to teach. And I, I teach in similar ways as it is now, but uh, he's a really good instructor is what I'm trying to say. And one of the things to me that shows a really good instructor is somebody that can take a very complex idea and boil it down into such simple terms that all the ideas are still represented and yet it's easily digestible for the student. So he does this in a few ways and sometimes he will jokingly oversimplify things and it's kind of funny but it's also true so the more you know it's true the kind of harder it hits. But uh, <laughs> he, he took some of the things that we were working on at the last workshop and built on those and also gave us a few more new things besides those and he's really good at taking this one simple little idea you know all we're going to work on today is this one really simple movement and it, i mean simple is in very bare bones but if you're familiar with the system you realize how deep and how important that can really be and so he emphasizes just getting extremely good at these couple little facets of it and don't worry about the complicated stuff. Don't worry about memorizing all these different things because in doing these simple things, it will allow you to more easily do the complicated things. You won't have to really try. They just kind of happen because you're doing all the fundamentals extra well. And I love that approach. I really do. So then he'll take that one core little idea. It's okay. Now that we're doing this and we're doing this really well, or at least as well as we can, <laughs> now we're gonna add one more little layer. And that next layer, the next little step is not a complicated step. It's just, okay, now we're gonna introduce this. Oh, notice how much more that hurts or notice what this does. And he would never tell you what to expect to feel or what to expect to happen. He would just ask you to notice it. And notice, notice if anything changes here. Notice anything that pops up here. And yeah, if you're really sincerely trying, those things will happen. And he's showing you where to put your focus and you know, pay attention to what it's doing. And then he would also give us the parameters to play with some of the stuff. 
And that's where I get really excited because in any martial arts system, I feel when you understand a certain fundamental enough, it's good to play with that fundamental. It's good to play with that idea, that concept or that technique, and then kind of not necessarily morph it, but see where its boundaries are, see what happens, experiment with it, investigate what your body does. Once you understand it to a certain point, Great example, uh, we got some stance work that I do in karate and involves things like horse stance or takedowns and knee alignment is extremely important in any martial art really, but uh, knee alignment is just good to have. So if a student is having trouble with knee alignment in something like a horse stance, I'm not going to just say, well, you know, here's, here's a couple cool like stepping things that you can do from horse stance to this stance to that stance. And I want you to just do this a lot and just kind of play with it. You know, move around the kitchen with it or this or this. If their knee alignment is bad, I'm not going to have them do that because they're not paying attention to the right fundamental first. They're going to screw up their knee and they're not going to get anything from it. However, once they fix that knee alignment, the structure is sound, the legs are strong enough to do it, and they're starting to realize, okay, if I do this certain thing from this stance into this stance or transitioning into that stance in the first place, I can generate power. Now it's time to play with it. Now you can use that for takedowns. Now you can use that to getting in close, getting out. The, the options are kind of endless. But for me to go out and list all the different things that they can do and craft 900 different drills for them to work on every little aspect of what they can do. It's not going to do them or me any good. It's just going to hinder learning. It's going to hinder their understanding. They're going to just memorize crap. So if you say, here are different ways that you can tinker with it and the parameters for you to play in, now anything in there is going to be constructive and they're going to be working at a couple different points of entry for the knowledge that they want. And I find that to be really a fun spot to get in any system and I'm obviously like I'm, I'm flicking the tip of the iceberg on any of this stuff however my alignment's pretty good my I, I'm able to release decently enough to get things started uh, my my understanding is so much so that I won't actively hurt myself <laughs> in doing some of these things so that's a pretty good starting point and Curtis is very good at showing you where these boundaries are and then showing you how to play within those boundaries and tinker with things because it's important for your body to understand what you're doing, not really for you to memorize what you should feel or what you should do. It's just you do these causes, oh, your body recognizes what's going to happen. And so the more you tinker with it, the more you broaden your understanding. And that's important. So all that to say, that's really exciting. And I feel like every time I work with him, he gives me a little bit more things that I can play with and a deeper way to play with it. And yeah, it's just really fun. And at these workshops, um, <laughs> there's <laughs> I have a few different approaches for these, but um, you know, I pay money to go to these things. So I want to soak up as much as I can. I don't really want to pester anybody or step on toes or be that guy. But I also want to soak up and absorb as much as this as I possibly can. I don't want to be the guy that, oh, you're doing everything right. Or you're way off in the corner and no one really sees you. So one of my approaches is I will try to make sure I'm up near the front, if not front row. And if I can get front row and center, even better. Because now I got a really close visual on exactly what the instructor is doing. I can properly hear everything. And when I make mistakes, you know, I'm gonna, they're going to see me pretty quickly making some big mistake and help me correct it. And also putting myself up in the front like that really helps me hold myself accountable when it comes to these techniques and these, these ways of training. Because when we're doing some of these things, Externally, it doesn't look like you're doing much. Like, really doesn't look like you're doing much. Internally, it's very painful, and it takes 100% of my processing power. It's, a, it's not an easy task. So it's really easy for me to, 
I'm pretty good at it, or I, I don't lie to myself. It's, I'm getting a lot better at that, and it's, it helps with your training. But also to not just kind of make it look like I'm doing it, you know, and, and then externally it's hard to tell, and kind of get away with little things like that that are just really not good for my training. So it, it's another way for me to remind myself, hey, you really have to give it 110%, bud, because uh, you're front and center. Everybody's watching, not just the instructor. And another good reason why I do it is because, well, I, I really, really try not to quit anything too early. And some of these are very hard to continue doing for the allotted amount of time. You know, like crucifix, or yin yang palm, or hummingbirds, or I mean, the list goes on. <laughs> the squat. And I know a lot of other people have difficulty in continuing that current exercise, especially when somebody else in the peripheral vision gives up early. It's like it kind of gives you that excuse, that little out of, oh, okay, they got up and they shook their legs off. That means it's, it's kind of okay to do that. And then before you know it, a lot of people are doing it and they're not pushing themselves as hard as they can. So I like to go up front because I used to do that I don't like that I used to do that, so I don't do it anymore. And I will push myself, maybe to a fault, but I will push myself to just keep going and uh, see what happens. So I put myself up there and hoping that if anyone does have that kind of trouble, that motivation to continue, they see me up there shaking like a tree, but not stopping. And then hopefully that helps them push past that barrier as well. So. Anyway, I just went off on a huge rant about standing up front. My apologies. This year, uh, we got a lot of hands-on. It was a slightly smaller class, and that helped both Curtis and the host, Jim, who was fantastic, by the way, really, really helpful. Uh, they both gave everybody there as much hands-on as they wanted. There were times, you know, you'd be doing a, a quick little demonstration of the next thing that we're going to be doing for this two-person drill, and everybody's formed a circle, and, and he will actually stop and go, does anyone want to feel that? And we'd have person after person after person, and that's, it is really important to get hands on, because it, it makes, it changes everything. And I don't know, I mean, I could think of a few reasons. One is I put myself in front, but I don't really know how I became the punching bag for some of these. And it's, that's a, it's a term of endearment for me because I thoroughly enjoy getting all the hands-on that I can get. And I really like being flung around. It's fun, but I learn a ton. So I was thrown around by Curtis every single day of this workshop. Um, he would call me over for, you know, here's what we're going to be doing next. And I was his, I was his punching bag, basically. And it was fantastic. It was great. Because <laughs> he would be explaining, you know, oh, here's one way you can counter this. I can't do his accent. I'm you know, sorry. But uh, <laughs> here's one way you can counter this. And he would say what he's about to do, and you, you could hear it and then see it happen to somebody and go, okay, I guess I'll give that a try. But when you hear him say it, you see kind of like something start to happen, and then you feel what he's doing, and he's doing it really well, I get a physical example of something to shoot for. I can feel what's happening at my own level, but it's, it's more avenues for me to understand it. And it's, it's just really fun too, <laughs> not gonna lie. But all in all, it was a great time. I really enjoyed seeing everybody. Uh, there's quite a few familiar faces from other camps and workshops and things, and it's great to catch up. How has your training been going? Did you get to go to this one? Oh, I ran into so-and-so. It's, it's nice because the community around this system of Tai Chi is it's great. It's a lot of wholesome people, a lot of really good people and a lot of really interesting characters. Something that will probably continue to throw me off a little bit is I will run into somebody and I won't recognize their face. I'm good with faces. And I definitely don't remember their name, I'm terrible with names, but they, they'll shake my hand and really excited to see me and it's, they have a familiarity with their, their greeting. And it throws me off 
because then I wonder, do I, do I not remember this person? Like, oh, I feel like a butthead now. And I had a few of these where, no, I've never actually met this person. They've just been watching my videos. <laughs> and they'll say that, or it occurs to me, oh, you know me through these. And what throws me off is that I'm, I'm such a, a quiet, introverted guy that I'm, I'm not used to that. What feels unsolicited. And so I would say, no, I'm doing these. But uh, <laughs> don't stop shaking my hand, you know, don't stop coming up and greet me if you see me. I, I do really enjoy it and it, it's cool and it means a lot because, I mean, somebody's enjoying these, so <laughs> it's just odd. And so if you do that and I get kind of a weird look on my face, it's okay. <laughs> I'm just an awkward guy. Um, but yeah, it's, things have been looking better and better. Um, you know, we had our summer camp for the dojo here. So like a karate camp over the weekend, we rent out these pavilions at this campground, we train all day and then we have s'mores at night. And it's a, it's a big dojo wide get together. And it's, it's just awesome. And that camp was kind of in between and up and a down for me as far as my health goes. So I was able to do more than I thought I was gonna be able to, but I found something really fascinating and that is even though my, my I, I refer to it as like my gas tank is running on low and I just, that's what I mean is I don't really have a lot of energy physically to do a lot of things. But even though my gas tank was really low for a lot of internal stuff, external stuff, so long as I didn't contract my muscles too much, so much as I didn't, you know, use too much muscle, I, I, I had a little more fuel in the tank than I thought. And, you know, I'd keep muscles pretty well relaxed. I was able to release into certain positions. I was able to do things with better structure and better alignment. And that's all great. And sure, that does bring up the efficiency. But it was kind of to almost absurd amounts where I was able to do things that I could do before that would have made me tired on a good day. But even though I was kind of down and out, I was able to do them better and I, I literally didn't run out of breath. I had like 20% lung capacity and uh, I was fine. So there's something strange about all this and I'm okay with that. As hopefully everything continues in this upward trend, I'm gonna have not just more of these, but I got some other ones. Now that I maybe use sharp and shiny things, I got some other videos coming up here that I'm really excited to do, as I'm always really excited to do these. And uh, yeah, just a, a really big thank you to anyone watching, anyone that's been sticking it through. I know we had, I didn't upload there for a good while. Thank you very much for my Patreon supporters. You guys are troopers and uh, your support means a lot to me. So if you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, uh, it's, it's nothing big, but I do have a link down in the description. And then I also have, I don't know if I should call it an affiliate link because I'm not like, a, like an HME teacher affiliate, but I have a link for the site. I don't know how to call it, but I have a link. And so if you're interested in trying HME online, it is a really good course. And I'm, I'm really excited to push further in this one. A lot of great detail, great explanations on things. And people are really, really willing to bend over backwards to help you understand different things. Um, so if you're interested in trying HME, I think they still offer a month for free, but use my link down below because it doesn't cost more for you at all, but I actually get a little bit of a kickback on that one. So it's like more people you bring in, yeah? But uh, no, it's, it's very worthwhile. Uh, it has really greatly enriched my life. And so I do really recommend trying it out. And uh, yeah, thanks you guys for watching. See you in the next one.